Well, I've been wanting to make a video responding to what happened with the Coleco Chameleon at the Toy Fair, but that's been pretty hard. How do you respond to what they brought? Their prototype is an insult to the people who have been following this. That's all it is, a giant middle finger to them. A middle finger that says, you know what, we can't do it the right way, so we're just going to scam our way through it. And it's no surprise that they ran away from the forums with their tail between their legs. They've completely ditched the retro gamer market. Their new market is just people who are dumb enough to fall for this. And he can't seriously believe that the community is as dumb as he is. We found out it was a SNES Jr. in the first hour of the Toy Fair. I have no problem saying that he's running a complete scam at this point. And Mike, if you're watching this, and you still think that you're right, that you don't have a SNES Jr. under there and you have nothing to hide, I will give you time to prove me wrong on my own channel. Bring what you brought to the Toy Fair, let's open it up and see what's inside. This is an open invitation to publicly humiliate me on my own channel, and it's yours for the taking if you can prove it. But you know what, that's never gonna happen. I know that because I've studied this man. I've got him down to a science. I know more about Mike Kennedy than historians know about John F. Kennedy. And if there's one thing I know he likes, more than anything else, it's gloating about his accomplishments. If it wasn't a SNES Jr. in there, he would take the earliest opportunity to show off what's inside and prove those naysayers are wrong. But he's not doing that, and we've been through the same song and dance before. Remember when he kept avoiding discussion about the prototype in the first campaign? Then what'd we find out? He didn't have one. The part that really pisses me off more than anything else is that I actually took him seriously. I treated him like a force to be reckoned with. And when I criticized him, I always put a lot of time and effort into my videos. And then he comes to the toy fair with this piece of shit. There is no doubt that it's deceptive. And I gotta tell you guys, because of that, I think this project took a very dark turn. Don't get me wrong, I still think it's funny. This whole thing is something the Coen brothers couldn't script. But if this were a play, I've got to tell you, we're deep into the second act, and I still don't know if this is going to be a comedy or a tragedy. But let's put all that aside for a minute, because I have another card to add to this deck. You see, after PAX, I came back with a renewed perspective on this whole project. And I think there is an upside to what's going on here. There is a warm, comforting lesson to be learned here. I discovered this when I found out that Mike isn't alone. It turns out his breed is multiplying. When I was on the show floor at PAX, I was drawn to this one particular booth. The guy behind it had a very strange service to offer. I think Mike himself would describe this guy as an entrepreneur through and through. And now, without further ado, let me introduce you to the dumbest idea from PAX South, Game Slam. Okay, Game Slam. Game Slam is a mobile app that was developed for trading your unwanted video games in your local community. It's really simple. Basically what it is, you scan in the games that you don't want anymore, you scan in the game that you would like to have. And at that point, you select a radius that you're willing to travel from 5 miles to, to uh, 50 miles. Once that's done, what we do is we find the trade for you. Once we find the trade for you, we get to, we'll send you a push notification saying we found a trade. At that point, uh, you, you pay to communicate with the other uh, party, it's $2.99. Now what you've done, $2.99, you've gotten rid of the game you didn't want, and then you got the game you want. And that's really all it is to it. Nice. Can you show us? Do you have a phone so we can see what the, how the app works? I do. Uh, awesome. We'll see if we got the right service in here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm getting no okay, service over here. Here is Game Slam. What right. it is, I just cancel that. This is the games that I, I have to swap. These are the games that I want. Yeah. So what I've done is I put them in, and because I already know, um, it's going to find my trade. It may take just a second. There's, Wow, it found me somebody. So I look at it to say, which ones it got? So in his library, he should have more than one game in there. And it's, the service is slow. Yeah, I'm getting the same thing. Okay, Don't worry. So I'm going to back up because it's there. And then, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. At, anyway, if I back up, I can propose to make a trade. Once I propose to trade, it goes to a screen that says pay to communicate. Uh -huh. Once I pay to communicate, and this is the iOS version, I put in my iTunes password and the pay is done. And then uh, you guys talk through SMS. Okay, and who pays to trade? Uh, I mean, is it the person who's reaching out or does the person Each who's, side. Who's each party pays. Each party pays really each, each party is reaching out. Okay, I see. See what I mean? It's, yeah. It's benefit. There it goes. Oh, uh, there you so go. So there's the games that you had, and this was the actual game that I was wanting. Uh -huh. and, and if I, well, I got to back up now. There's my trade, propose, pay to communicate. And, and at this point, it'll ask for my Apple ID, which I don't need to put that in because I don't want to pay. 
I see what you mean, yeah. <laughs> this is for testing purposes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. so uh, what kind of games can I trade though? Can I do uh, from Atari up to PS4? Yes. I mean, what, just it's, everything? It's, it's anything. Right. Now, here's the, here's the deal. We got to get the library built up. Uh -huh. The more people participate, the quicker that library is going to be built. Exactly, yeah. And the, nice. Thanks That's so much, it. Darren. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, everyone, say it together with me. What is the problem with Game Slam? The price. No one is going to be trading games for a combined total of $6 per trade. I'm a collector, and a lot of the games I pick up on a regular basis are worth $2.99. And I can imagine a few more problems as well. For instance, the trade comes with no guarantee. It's not like eBay where you're buying and selling the actual item for money. All he's selling you is the other person's contact info. So if that person decides to flake out, then you just lost $2.99. Now to give the guy some credit, the idea isn't terrible. It's just the execution where it got really stupid. He's definitely not as bad as Mike Kennedy right now. He's actually unashamed and upfront about the cost, and he's not trying to deceive anyone here. Plus, I think his error is fixable. Here's my solution. Why not make your app free, but also ad-supported? So instead of having to pay, the user will just have to sit through an ad before getting the other person's phone number. And then you just rake in the ad revenue. You can get tons of people signing up for that. Heck, I'd even try it out just to see what other people in my area have. And I think if he fixes that problem, he has a better chance of finding success. But I told you that Mike Kennedy and Darren are birds of the same feather. So how is Mike similar to Darren? Well, it definitely ain't the working prototype part, that's for sure. Oh! They're similar because it takes a special mind to look at a community of people who are enjoying themselves, and then think, you know what I can do that would be really fun and helpful to everyone here? How about if I slipped a paywall right in the middle of this community so that you guys can have fun by paying me? Whether it's when you're trading or buying a completely unnecessary console for homebrew or reproduction cartridges. Seriously, the Retro VGS at least had a purpose before when they wanted to put digital indie games on cartridges. But what's the reason for owning a $150 retro console for playing cartridge-based games on a different cartridge? You know, maybe I'm the one who's not seen the business possibilities here. I think I've got some ideas that would make these guys proud. How about this? I know you gamers are competitive and you like to beat each other's high scores, so how about I make this online leaderboard where anybody can pay me a dollar to submit a high score, and then at the end of the month I'll take the 10 highest scores, and maybe you're one of them. Oh man, that's so fun! How about this idea? I know gamers like their discussion forums, so how about this? I make an online discussion forum, where you pay a dollar for every post you make. Oh man, you guys are gonna have so much fun with that. I've got another idea. I know you guys like watching Let's Plays, so how about we rent out movie theaters to broadcast your favorite Let's Plays, and you guys can pay me $12 for admission. Oh man, that sounds like so much fun. Or how about this idea? You know that site YouTube, where any lunatic can broadcast whatever he wants for free? How about this? You guys pay a subscription fee to watch certain videos. Oh wait, wait, shit. Someone beat me to it. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that it's evil to charge for a service or a product. The problem I have is that these ideas are coming from complete money-grubby morons who don't understand their market. No one wants this shit. Give it up already. If you don't understand us, then leave our little utopia alone. All those guys understand is that they want to take money out of your pocket and put it in theirs. Whatever scheme they have cooked up for doing that is purely incidental. And guess what? These guys aren't the first, and they won't be the last. In fact, I already warned you guys about this in the first video I ever made about the Retro VGS. Guys, be careful out there. If you're a retro gamer, then you are in a niche part of the market that's booming right now. And there are plenty of traveling salesmen out there with their eyes on your wallet. Let me buy the shit. Leave that to me. I don't want you guys to fall for it. Alright, I know this is painting a grim picture of the future. It's a future loaded with snake oil salesmen that are after your money. So where's the upside to this? I promised you this video has a happy ending. Well, here's the thing. I'm not happy with what they're doing, but I'm happy with what it means for the industry at large. Let me give you a little excerpt from a book called The Reckoning. This book is about the rise of the Japanese auto industry after World War II. And the part I'm talking about involves a man named Hayato Ikeda. And he's not just anybody. He would later become Japan's prime minister in 1960. So the guy probably knows what he's talking about. Anyways, as you might know, Japan was a hellhole after World War II. Their industry and economy were in shambles. Plus, inflation was out of control, so money wasn't worth anything. But then one day, Mr. Ikeda realized that the worst inflation was over, and their economy was starting to recover. 
They asked him, how do you know? And he said, because the police chief of Tokyo told me so today. They then asked him, and how does the police chief of Tokyo know? Mr. Ikeda replied with, oh, he said he was sure the recovery had begun, because for the first time in years, Tokyo's thieves have started stealing money from people again. Until now, the money was not worth enough to steal. So you see, guys, you're going to have to take the good and the bad with this community. Just like I told you, the retro gaming scene is very lucrative right now. It's a gold rush, and you're going to get bad people in there too. But those people who are trying to take advantage of others prove that we as a whole are very strong. We're in our prime right now. We're doing very well for ourselves. But we're going to have to be careful because we are going to attract people like this. But as long as we look after each other and we avoid their scams, I gotta say, it feels good to be on top. Thank you for watching, guys. And if you want to see more of my ramblings about the Coleco Chameleon, I wrote a guest blog for NintendoLoveAffair.com. I left a link in the description. But yeah, it was really fun to work with him, and my blog is pretty funny. But I'll let you guys decide that. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.